most game shows uh, really taking on a theme. We've definitely seen this movie before with the Raptors. An ultra competitive first half is taken away by a lackluster second half where the better team just takes over. Not much you can really expect differently, but let's try to break this down as best as possible in tonight's post game show. We do content like this for every Raptors game, so if you like what you see, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and drop a like as well to support the content. But we're running out of words here for these post-game shows. When we come into these Raptors games, I struggle to really kind of amp myself up to do these things as we celebrate brand new subscriber here by Ebidnes. Ebidnes? Thank you so much for subscribing. I, I struggle to come into these games to hype myself up to watch this team right now. Guys are injured. Obviously, if the team is healthy, things are going differently. But it, it's seven losses in a row. And yes, for the grand scheme of the season, overall standings, like losses like this are good. Seven losses in a row have the Raptors now equal with the Memphis Grizzlies in the NBA standings. That's great as far as keeping the pick is concerned. The top six protected pick sent out to the San Antonio Spurs. Just watching the games happen especially a game like this where a lot of the more intriguing young players in the team don't really play well, it's tough. It's tough to stomach. It's tough to sit through, but we do it. And this one, I've sat through enough of it. There's three minutes left. The Raptors are down by 20 points to the Orlando Magic. And yeah, I don't really feel like watching anymore. Uh, tonight, the Raptors down by five at halftime. Ugly third quarter, not so great fourth quarter. Going to be a blowout. Friday against the Magic, Raptors down two at half, end up losing by double digits. Wednesday, Raptors up 16 in the first half, up at halftime against the Pistons, blow the lead, lose by nine. Monday, up by 22 against Denver, up at halftime, and end up blowing the lead and losing that one. So, yeah, it's been it's becoming a little bit of a theme for this team to... Stay competitive first half, and that just drops off second half as the opposition makes adjustments, as they just kind of kick into gear, being the better teams, rather than underdogs in all these games. And yeah, watching it, I don't know. Just watching them unfold, I'm, I'm not really seeing anything glaring that it feels like the Raptors are not doing. You know, it, it, it's not like there's anything in particular I'm seeing that they're doing overly poorly. That is something that they can manage. There's there's a gulf in class right now between these teams. Orlando are in pretty good playoff positioning right now. They're the better team. They are a stingy defensive team. They nearly kept the Raptors to under 100 on Friday. And they're going to keep the Raptors seemingly well under 100 in this one. So... Tough matchups, tough everything, and it's like going to spin like this for large parts of the rest of the season. The Raptors ended, entered tonight with the 10th most difficult remaining schedule, and that's great from a draft pick perspective, but as we stomach the final 15 games, including tonight, 14 games after this one has been officially concluded, yeah, as we, as we try to kind of stomach these games for the rest of the season, there's going to be some tough ones. There are going to be some tough watches, but... Hopefully along the way, the Raptors can maintain at least some level of competitiveness. The box score will, will say that it wasn't really competitive at all tonight. But, you know, looking at where it was in the first half, it wasn't all bad. It wasn't all bad. So at the very least, there's some level of intrigue and excitement to watching the team. I don't feel like it's, I don't feel like it's a waste of time watching these games. So for that, I'm happy because it really could have spun into even further levels of chaos for this season, but the Raptors are maintaining structure and it still definitely feels like on a game-to-game -game basis, I don't know how they're doing it, but the players are in it to win. The players are working hard. They're keeping those energy levels. Morale seems to be decent. It's not like they're just rolling over walking into games expecting to lose and playing like it like they're battling each game they're trying to win each game and that can't be easy to keep on bringing that energy keep on bringing that mindset when you're just losing every game uh, and they have lost every game 
and it does feel like no end is in sight for the for, for the near future for that losing streak. If we look at the upcoming games here, Wednesday against the Kings in Toronto, probably eight point underdogs in that one. Friday in Toronto against the Thunder, probably nine ten point underdogs there. And then a back the second night of a back to back, you go to Washington. Washington are not good and they're tanking, but honestly, like Washington's probably favored there. That's winnable, but you're probably still an underdog. The Monday game against the Brooklyn Nets after that at home, you might be an underdog there slightly as well. Like they're winnable, but you still might be underdogs. It's very realistic. The Raptors are underdogs in every game for the rest of the season. So I don't really know, like, you know, they'll probably pick up wins here and there, but they probably won't be getting many along the way. And that might be a good thing. Tankathon is not quite yet updated to the final results here, but the Raptors will drop to 23 and 45. Seven losses in a row will put the Raptors as tied in sixth, sixth bottom of the league with the Memphis Grizzlies, giving them about a 45% chance of using their pick in the upcoming draft. And if my uh, quick Google search was correct, the Toronto Raptors do not hold the tiebreaker over the Memphis Grizzlies, but uh, I'm not confirmed on that. Regardless, strength of schedules remaining on the season. The Raptors coming in tonight, like I said, had the 10th most difficult remaining schedule. Grizzlies had the 16th most difficult remaining schedule as the game wraps up here with the Raptors losing by 15 points in the end. And like I said to start off, kind of a shame when like the players you really want to get a look at actually don't play well. Abaji had seven points in the first quarter, but only two in the remaining three. Keolinic started pretty well. And it's not really a whole lot he can do, but 11 points for him. Gary Trent, decent night, 6 of 12 from the field, 2 of 6 from 3. Missed his first four three-point attempts, but got him back. 15 points, 5 rebounds, 3 assists, 2 steals, and a block for Trent. I can't really be upset with that stat line. Quickly, though, tough night. This is a guy you really want to get a good look at and see some improvements, but just an off game here. 4 of 15 from the field, 0 of 6 from 3, minus 26 for Quick. And Grady Dick, 4 of 11, 2 of 3 from 3 for 10 points, which is nice, but... Just has not looked good defensively on either side of this uh, back, not back-to-back nights, but back-to-back games against the Orlando Magic. He's a minus 27 in this one. I believe he was a minus 32 on Friday. A bright spot is Jordan Noir's performance, 18 points, 7 rebounds, 7 of 9 shooting from the field. Perfect 6 of 6 shooting on twos in this one. He's in a contract year, and you got to remember, these games are still important to these guys, and they're still battling out there. Jordan Noir is a good example. Jamias Ramsey on his second 10-day contract, trying to earn another contract, trying to earn a standard NBA contract. Five points for him, two of six shooting, but bringing good energy and good levels defensively. Bruce Brown with, honestly, one of his better nights as a Raptor, 12 points, four rebounds. And despite Jonte Porter only finishing with four points, I feel like he's continuing to get better, especially defensively. Seven rebounds, three assists, a steal, and a block for him. But Orlando's had too much firepower. Bancaro gets 29 on 11 of 16 shooting. Franz Wagner gets 22 on 8 of 13 shooting. Bo Wagner gets 14 on 6 of 9 shooting. It, it's, it's pretty apparent the Raptors are lacking rim protection. They're lacking players who can get the stops on the inside. And Orlando exposed that for much of the game. And again, there's not really much the Raptors could have done about it. 60 points in the paint for the Magic. They forced 18 turnovers. <sighs> You know, what do you really expect from this one for the Raptors? What do you really expect as well when the team shoots 45% from the field, 26% from three? The Magic beat us up on the inside. They shoot 51% from the field despite only going 31% from three. Possession battles, somewhat similar. They get one extra rebound. We get one extra offensive rebound. They force four more turnovers, but, you know, it's a make or miss league. They were making their shots. The Raptors were not. And uh, the better team does come out on top. So, 23 and 45, seven losses in a row kind of sucks, but we're looking at that tank battle and the Raptors are on track, give themselves an opportunity with that draft pick at the end of the season. So, you know, we'll monitor what goes on the rest of the week. You know, it's nice to see competitiveness at least for a half, but I'd like to see a bit more work being done to counteract any adjustments made by the opposition to maintain competitiveness in the second half. I'm not sure why four games in a row that's happened, but why the team's tapered off. Hopefully that's something that can be fixed, but I think these games could be going a whole lot worse than they are 
here. So that will do it for this one. I'll be back here Wednesday. This is Raptors take on the Sacramento Kings. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you know when there's content coming out. And drop a like on this one if you did enjoy. I'll be back on Wednesday, and I hope to see you there. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs>